Boy, did, did I ever step on the toes of some angry liberal yesterday. Holy moly. So after the show, I ended up uh, putting together a video from one of our conversations about... Uh, if you were here yesterday morning, you may have heard me talking about this. A new poll shows that for the first time, a majority of Americans want a ban on Muslim immigration into the United States. This follows some of the most recent terrorist attacks around the world. And each time you have another one of these attacks, and they've been going on daily, it's really just the scope of them. Some are larger than others. Each time you have a really big one, that number goes even higher. So we had a 10-minute conversation about that on the course of the program yesterday, maybe from about 9.20 till about 9.40 with a few commercial breaks in between that uh, that uh, that give, it, give us about 10 minutes' time in that actual window to talk about all of this. I put together the video, and then I wrote a short introduction for it, posted it at our NewsRadio1310.com Facebook page. Well, NewsRadio1310, the .com is our website. Posted it at our Facebook page and done pretty well. It's not the most trafficked thing that I've ever posted on the web, but, but let me share this with you. I started looking at some of the comments last night before I went to bed, and there is a woman, and she's you can see the steam coming out of her ears because I said Idaho and America, you know, the majority of people in Idaho and America are opposed to this. Now, let me tell you a little story here. We post a lot of things to the Internet. The corporate people tell us if we post Idaho or Twin Falls, you know, your locality and your state, you will actually get more page views. So that's what we do. That's what we're instructed to do. The woman is fuming, saying, you have no evidence that the people of Idaho overwhelmingly oppose this program, or even that a majority of them oppose the program. As it turns out, she works for one of these resettlement agencies. And in other words, is getting a salary, so she's got to defend it. Because, you know, no refugee resettlement, she's got to go look for a job somewhere else. Hmm. As if she doesn't have a special interest in all of this. Well, let me, let me just point something out. We're going to have a referendum in Twin Falls County in a matter of... Gosh, nine weeks, eight or nine weeks on this whole matter, and we will find out just what people here believe. And I've been talking to some of the people who've been out canvassing, going door to door. I talked to someone who has spoken. She has talked with hundreds of people and only found one person out of those hundreds who actually support that refugee resettlement program on the local level. I mean, it is ridiculously overwhelming. And, you know, all right, so we're using anecdotal evidence, but it would appear that at least in some parts of Idaho, people are completely fed up with all of this. And they want nothing to do with it. And in fact, it will be a lot higher than 51% in Idaho. And for all you liberals out there, who you limousine liberals who live in a bubble and think that everyone else thinks just like you, and it's only a handful of people out there who need to be schooled by you all of the time on these issues, let me tell you something. Idaho has two U.S. senators. They're both Republicans, and they both have great ratings from the American Conservative Union. Idaho has two U.S. congressmen. Both are Republicans. One has an exceptionally high rating from the American Conservative Union. And even the one who often gets criticized by local conservatives still has a fairly high rating. Idaho has a Republican governor. Idaho has a Republican lieutenant governor. Both houses of the Idaho legislature are controlled by Republicans. Most of the county commissions throughout the state of Idaho are Republican. And wouldn't you know it, in most of the towns, villages, and cities around the state, government is controlled by Republicans. So this notion out there that people in Idaho are jumping up and down so they can support this refugee resettlement program, you better get off the crack because it's really interfering with your thinking process. 11 minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. I was telling one of my coworkers yesterday afternoon, He's a relative newcomer, grew up in Missouri, ended up working for many, many years in Colorado. He's been in Idaho now not quite six months, maybe not even four months. And I was telling him, I have been in the talk radio business off and on since 1994. I, Other than maybe Obamacare when it first passed, I know of no other issue that has gotten the response from a listening audience that this refugee resettlement program has gotten. And most people here didn't really think about it or care about it for years, which tells you that, you know, it was going on, it didn't bother them. And to sit here and say that they all of a sudden became racist bigots in, in a matter of 10, 11, 12 months is ridiculous. They didn't have a problem with it before because they didn't have a problem with people coming here. But now that we're seeing these stepped-up attacks around the world and the threats being made against Western civilization, 
they have some legitimate concerns. And Lefty out there can't understand that. Lefty, as I've repeated many times on this show, is the same person who will tell you after a school shooting that one death of one little child is one too many. But if a fellow and his wife walk into a party, a Christmas party in California, and they shoot dead 14 and leave three dozen injured, well, then that's an acceptable loss in Libby's land. Which just shows you how sick, twisted, and maladjusted these people happen to be. It's 39 right now. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. If I could, very quickly, a couple of things I wanted to share with you this morning. We're trying to verify this, and so is the Daily Caller. Uh, the Daily Caller points out it, it could be somebody actually just having some fun, but it says this is the headline from the Daily Caller Trump has finally inspired me to leave Islam. That's a quote. Trump fan ditches, uh, ditches her religion. Now, it could be someone who's pulling a prank on a particular website called Reddit, but this is what was actually posted there. The writer says, Until yesterday, I had not once removed my hajib in my life while outside. The author, who claims to be a 19-year-old girl whose parents are Muslim immigrants, explained, I tried to do it once a week when I was 10 years old, and my parents grounded me for a week. The author states, in her view, the idea of, quote, moderate Muslims is BS, although she didn't abbreviate BS. That's an unquote. There are no assimilated Muslims, she writes. Throughout my life, I have been to three different mosques on a regular basis, she added. Everyone there had some kind of animosity toward America. Everyone there had some animosity toward America. As we've said on the program before, you always have to qualify this so that our liberal friends out there will feel better. Not all Muslims are bad. Oh, maybe only half a billion. 736-0300. That's 736-0300. You can also reach me by email at bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That's bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. And then I have this from Crisis. A writer by the name of William Kilpatrick, formerly a professor at Boston College in Boston, Massachusetts. The problem with multicultural foot washing, this is called. This is long. I'm going to give you just a couple of paragraphs. It's about six pages long, printed out. And he's mentioning what happened last week when the Pope decided to wash the feet of some Muslims, including you know a number of different people from around the world. He says, Muslims, however, may see this differently, not as a gesture of brotherhood, but as one of submission and surrender. The word Islam means submission, and submission is what Islam expects of other faiths. Muslims consider Islam to be the supreme religion to the extent that it tolerates the people of the book, Christians and Jews. Islam tolerates them on the condition that they acknowledge its supremacy. Historically, the people of the book were expected to assume the status of dhimmi, second-class citizens with limited rights. So here's the leader of the largest Christian church in the world getting down on his knees, kissing people's feet and washing them. How is that going to be perceived? It's going to be perceived in many parts of the Muslim world as surrender, as submission. 815, you're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Hi, I just wanted to let you know how much my husband and I appreciate your commentary. You just really hit the mark. So thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well, thank you. I don't get those type of calls. You know, even even people who are generally in agreement just tend to agree or join in the venting. So once in a great while you get one of those, and uh, I just hope the uh, the boss is listening. <clears throat> it's 39 right now. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. The writer, Mr. Kilpatrick, or Dr. Kilpatrick, says, in assessing the impact of the novel foot-washing ceremony, the timing also needs to be taken into account. The Holy Thursday Mass came two days after the Brussels bombings, and at a time when Muslim persecution of Christians is escalating. If Christianity was anything other than a humiliated faith, Muslims would expect to see some kind of strong response or some gesture of resolve. Islam claims to be the natural religion of mankind, and he writes the natural response to aggression is resistance. As Obama, uh, Osama bin Laden reminded us, if a man sees a strong horse and a weak horse, he will by nature favor the strong horse. So you see what direction we're going here. And this fellow says, Pope Francis may have had the best of intentions, but he says this was not a good idea, especially last week, in light of what has been going on around the world. And this notion that if we all just be nice to these people, I keep hearing the argument, oh, those nasty Republican candidates, 
Ted Cruz wants to patrol their neighborhoods. And Donald Trump wants to bar them from coming. That's only going to inflame these people, and there'll be more of them who will want to strike out against us. Really, do they need any more inflaming than they already have? They've been striking out against us for 1,400 years. And this notion, finally, someone is talking tough. The, the other day, the Washington Post editorial board got all over Donald Trump because they said, well, would you use tactical nuclear weapons on a battlefield against ISIS? Trump said he'd leave the option open. It infuriated them. You know, and then people say, well, well, what's he going to do? Say no and then tell them, all right, if you nuke us, we won't do anything? You know, or is he going to say that's the answer for North Korea? That's the answer for Russia? That's the answer for China? Of course you leave everything. Why, why do you have these things sitting on the shelves? Well, for deterrence, and someday you might have to use them. Another caller joining us. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning. Hey, Bill, good morning. I was just going to make a comment about this Islamic refugee situation. Uh, I've been listening to a guy named Walid Shabbat. That oh, he's a good writer, Muslim, yeah. And he was talking about how all these wars that we've had in the Middle East and all the withdrawals and things that we've uh, done and, and also the uh, influx of these refugees into all these European countries and our own, it's giving them a sign of weakness, and uh, it gives them confidence. And the more we withdraw and the more we uh, let them just kind of run over us, the more their confidence grows. And he said that's the opposite of what we need to do. We need to smash them as far as ISIS goes and stuff like that in order to weaken their confidence. And then it would give us a better chance of getting control of the situation. Yeah, and I thank you for the call. Think about this. In World War II, had we decided to conduct that war, uh, if we had told Curtis LeMay and George Patton and Douglas MacArthur, well, now we don't want to offend any of these people, and we don't want any collateral damage, and so, you know, we'll need an occasional strike here and there, and maybe we can take out their leadership. And no, it was like, we got to get this done. we got to get it done now. If we get it done fast, or the fastest we can, we'll save lives in the long run, and you do that by simply going in there with overwhelming brute force and you smash things until the other guy says, I'm done, or screams, uncle. Who hasn't ever been involved in a tussle on the playground? You know exactly what I'm talking about. I've got a short break coming up. I've got a guest who will be joining us for a few minutes. He's in the real estate business, and he's expanding from that uh, Minicasha area over here into the uh, Twin Falls area. His name is uh, Lloyd Smith. Lloyd's on the way in just a couple of minutes. We'll also, I believe, checking in uh, with Ken Menzel in just a few minutes, too. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com.